Hi, my name is Venus O'Hara and welcome to my sex toy laboratory. In this video, I'm not going to be testing any toys. I'm going to present the five erotic books that have had the biggest impact on my erotic life. I'm going to present them to you in the order of appearance in my life. The very first erotic book that I read was Forever by Judy Bloom, and I don't have a copy with me because it was actually during um, at school when I was about 12, I think, which is absolutely scandalous. And it actually got passed around to my class. Um, it's one of the most amazing books I've ever read, and I actually loved it. And I loved Judy Bloom. I read several of her books at the time because when you're a teenager, you've got so many questions about sex and about puberty that you're ashamed to ask. And at the time, there was no internet, there was no Google. Um, so it was great that there were, I found all the answers to my questions in Forever by Judy Bloom. So let me just refresh my memory. I've just found Forever on the Amazon page. And it says, do you remember the first time? Still the bravest, freshest, fruitiest, and most honest account of first love, first sex, and first heartbreak ever written for teens. Wow. It was a book ahead of its time and remains after 30 years in print. A teenage bestseller. I remember the couple, Catherine and Michael, and I remember um, the descriptions of his penis. They were really quite explicit. And the fact that he called his penis Ralph. Every time I see the name Ralph now, I think of the penis, basically. Okay, so the next book that had a huge impact on my life, in order of appearance in my life, was Venus in Furs. I absolutely love this book. I read it when I was 18. So I was just discovering sex for the first time. And um, I had a boyfriend who was a little bit older than me and he gave this book to me. He gave, um, he gave me this book to read, not this actual copy. Um, and I remember, I remember it had a really big impact on me because I wanted to be Venus in furs. Um, basically, um, this is like my femdom Bible. This gave me the desire to dominate men, or more importantly, to be adored and worship. I love the actual um, worship in this book. And I, f I find it's really sensual as well, and it really, um, um, I love the fact that there's no formal or conventional sex in this book. It's all a big, big um, mind fuck, pardon my French. And yeah, it's just wonderful. And it's, it's a short book, but it's actually, it's absolutely full of amazing, horny, fetish details. <laughs> and of course, I love the fact that the protagonist is called Venus and she's a redhead with green eyes. So when I read this book, um, I was never the same again because I realized that I was reading my fantasy because at 18 years old, I don't think, I wouldn't describe, I wouldn't say I was a very assertive, dominant woman, not at all, but I wanted to be. So when I read this, I just read about the type of woman I wanted to be. I love men who are naturally submissive and also who are, um, who pay attention to the tiniest details. I find that a huge turn on. And I think this is something that I discovered when I read this book. The next book that's had a huge impact on my erotic life is Diario de una Nymphomana by Valerie Tasso. This book is in Spanish, but it also exists in English. And literally, it means Diary of a Nymphomaniac. But it was actually translated as Insatiable, the erotic adventures of a French girl in Spain. And let me just read the description for you from Amazon UK. Valerie Tasso is an unashamedly promiscuous French woman who becomes a high-class prostitute in Barcelona. This is her story, told in riveting and explicit detail. From sex in a graveyard to unusual acts with Coca-Cola bottles. Oh my God, I don't remember that bit. She explores every fetish with joyful abandon. Wow. I don't remember the Coca-Cola bottle bit. I'll have to uh, refresh my memory. 
Yeah, I love this book because, um, for several reasons, because um, I love erotic memoirs. I think I just love erotic memoirs. And also the story set in Barcelona, where I live, and I absolutely love Barcelona. And it's the first book I read in Spanish. So it was like, wow, I understand everything. And since its publication, I've read more of Valerie Tasso's books because I really like them. I'm not a big reader, so if I read someone, if I read several books from the same author, it means I really like them. And of course, since then, I have had the opportunity to meet Valerie Tasso in person and I've interviewed her twice, so that for me is a huge, huge, huge honour. Next book that's really influenced my life is um, The Art of Sardax, which um, is actually an illustrated book um, because I worked in a printer um, when I was about 26 to 28 or 29. And that's how I got into this world basically because I printed erotic books and um, as you can imagine, this was quite scandalous in my job at the time because um, I was like the younger English uh, salesperson with these very dodgy orders. So this book is um, Femdom. So you can see the recurring themes here. And this is Femdom. Um, and I love the combination with humour. So we've got a picture and then a text to describe the picture. And what I love about it is the, um, the fusion of formality and humour, beautiful women humiliating men, and it's just really funny. Um, I love it, I love it so much. And my favourite passage from this um, book, I'm going to read it to you, is called Tight Lacing. Which torments him the most? The heel of the long white leather boot jabbing down at its tip, or the ever tightening laces of the leather sheath, which she now pulls so savagely with her gloved hands? Or is it her brushed blonde hair dangling down over his nostrils and teasing him with its perfume, reminding him of happier, more innocent days? Wow, I love it. And also, I remember um, at the time when I was in the printer, I was so happy with this book. I was giving free samples to my colleagues and these, um, these women in administration were not impressed. One of them said, I would never buy a book like this, but you know, was looking at it like this. So <laughs> it was quite funny. Because people were saying to me, where's the sex, you know, where's the normal, why can't you bring us some books with nudity and lingerie? <laughs> Why is it always weird stuff? <laughs> okay, so then last but not least, when I was about 30, instead of thinking about maybe getting married and having kids and settling down, I decided that it was time to um, give in to my bi-curious desires. And I spent about three years with women. Oh yeah, but any, and, and, and at the time, this was a book that helped me or inspired me at that time. I read this book, Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters, which is absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, this very copy has been enjoyed by several pairs of hands. And this book I read when I was still bi-curious. And when I read it, I was like, I can't do this by curiosity anymore. I've got to actually do something. Oh, this really um, ignited the flame, let's say. So um, yes, yeah, so I would recommend this book to anyone because it's just so good. Uh, and especially if you're by curious. Anyway, that's all from my sex toy laboratory for today. Thanks for watching.